Today we are tier listing all of the isekai anime that I have ever watched. But before we get to that, we kind of have to ask the question, what even counts as being on that list? Because despite its popularity, the genre is at times rather nebulous. At first, I can it using the Oxford English Dictionaries, a definition, a Japanese genre of science fiction, a science or fantasy fiction featuring a protagonist, blah blah blah, we know what it is. But the problem is this actually doesn't help, because that doesn't tell me which of the animes I have counts. So we are instead going to be using my anime list explanation, oh tag of what counts as isekai. I have an account with them, I tr keep track of my anime that I watch with them, and luckily they have tagged 377 animes as isekai, so we'll use those. So we actually have about uh, three tiny little details I want to cover before we actually get to tier listing of these animes. Uh, the first thing is I want to cover what my categories here are. Uh, you can see them, but I'm trying to make this uh, decent so that you can listen to my whole description of these two. So you don't have to. And you can treat it like a podcast if you like. I like that idea. So I will... As tier category, I've just labeled as favorite. It's it's my favorite animes, and I can probably recommend them, but it's not like I can definitely recommend them. That is for my next category. The A tier is just recommend here. If it's in that category, I can recommend it. I can recommend this anime to people pretty easily, while the favorite category is perhaps uh, maybe a little more biased sometimes. We'll see. Our B tier category is watch if you have time. Uh, those are those things that it's like, I enjoyed it. But it's not particularly like, not a pressing matter for you to get to watching it. Uh, it's not like, yeah, it's like, uh, if you don't really know what you want to watch, but you know you want to watch an Isekai and you haven't seen one of these, uh, maybe watch one. Yeah. The, then we have the more negative categories. We have one for can't recommend it. If I put it in there, it's just not one I can recommend to your average person. There's a chance if there's like <clears throat> rather particular interests in it, I might go, okay, well, I suppose now that I think of it, this one, yeah, you might like this. Lastly, <laughs> rather extreme, but I have a category that's just I wish I could and watch it. Probably won't get very money in that, because honestly, most animes here, in fact, all of these, I've watched at least 12 episodes of. That's the second thing I wanted to point out. It's that uh, there are other isekais I've watched some of, but these are the ones that I've watched at least 12 episodes of them. Uh, whether I've watched more or, or so, uh, who knows? Oh, yeah, yeah. So some of them I ha have multiple seasons and I haven't watched all. Yeah. The last thing I'm going to touch on is, will be relevant to a couple of these, but not all of them. If these have source material that I have explored, read, whatever, I will bring that up and I'll let you know how such uh, experiences are influencing my decisions in these choices. Anyways, on to the actual tier listing. 
two staff. We have one. I, and I just put these in the middle until I've here listed them. We have this one that I'm starting with for a very particular reason. This one is she professed herself pupil of the wise man, I believe. And I don't think this one's very popular. I haven't actually seen much talk about this one uh, online and such before myself. But it's one where just for a little, I don't know, snaps this intro. Uh, the main character is... Uh, everyone's pulled into a massive an MMO video game. And the main character is pulled in as his uh, gender bent character that he was messing around with at one point. And the reason I'm bringing this one up first is I'll point out this one's tagged with Isekai and Amayal. I don't know why this one is, but for instance, Lag Horizon and oh, Sold Out Online Out, which I've watched both of those and this one. I, I don't know quite what differentiates, but you know, it might also lie in the source material of all three of those, which I haven't explored any of. So, who knows? Well, someone might. Uh, but anyways, okay, so I will say one of the neat things about this one is that it actually has a summoner class, uh, as in the main character, that's the class of the main character in this. I cannot remember the main character's name, but uh, in, in fact, like, uh, she's the best summoner. The, the best summoner in the kingdom, in the country, it's, was it a kingdom? I don't remember. It, it has been a bit since I saw this one, but I'm going to say I do recommend this one. However, there is a caveat here. It, it's got a great action in my opinion. <laughs> Not necessarily the best. It's got good action. Let's let's go with good action. However, some people just don't like it because some people don't like the three-dimensional CGI that it uses. And that's completely fair. It's a stylistic thing. Some people will like it, some people won't. I I I feel I I, I don't uh, I don't really weigh it either way in my decision. Uh, I don't find it as a pro or a con. I find it as just an aspect of it. But keep that in mind. If you're going to watch it and you don't like the three-dimensional CGI stuff, th this show has a ton of that. So stay away if you don't like that. Anyways, moving on. The rest of them are just in, I don't know what order. I didn't change the order of any of these other. The second one here is going to be one called Ascendance of a Bookworm. Now, Ascendance of a Bookworm. This is the first one we're covering that I have. I, I've read the source material. I've read all, but uh, I, I've fallen a little behind. Uh, but almost all of the English translated source material. And I, I love this. I, I'm just telling you right now, this is going in a favorite. However, I will say the anime might not be as good as the source material, but at this point with just how much of it I've read, I find them uh, how to separate in my mind. I do think when I do watch the anime, and I have I have rewatched it since reading the source material, so it, it's it's not, yeah, I, I have that perspective on it. And the anime's animation is perhaps lacking at times, and there are some storylines that are a tad rushed, but the show's getting up 
post season i believe by a new studio and uh, oh i am stoked honestly if if you know you know but we're going to get some awesome stuff in that and i i don't want to spoil anything. I could make a whole video just talking about Ascendance of a Bookworm. So we're just going to leave it there. It, no, wait. Uh, yes? No? Uh, it, it's about a Kirik dude trying to, who was reincarnated into a wallet with very few books. And she's a bookworm. She's trying to bring books to that wallet. Or at least... That's how we start the show, whether things stay that way, or change, and evolve. You'll see if you haven't seen it. I, I love it. So next up we have Eminence in the Shadow. I'm just going to put it right into recommend. That's the category that I think fits for it. It's a show about a psychopathic, overpowered Chunibyo. Which is a... Terrifying combination. It's a really interesting show. It is, I would say it's a parody. It, it oh, at least has parody elements in it. And no, it's definitely full on parody, isn't it? There's just a anime in this list that is more parody. So the show <laughs> covers a crazy guy, Sid Kagano, and how he accidentally founds a secret organization that he doesn't realize he's founded. Sort of, he thinks it's all a role play, but in uh, reality, it's real. It's silly. It's really silly to even to watch and to take uh, seriously it's even more silly but it's it, it's funny it has actually some really good action and i'm going to give a caveat here something kind of weird perhaps is that almost always honestly and some people may disagree no lots of people may disagree with me here Usually I don't really care one way or the other whether I'm watching an anime subbed or dubbed. Eh. I, honestly, usually I don't care. Despite the fact that there's a lot of voice actors I'm really fond of, I'll watch it either way. Sometimes I'll prefer one or the other. But in this case, I have to say you have to watch it subbed. You have to watch the original Japanese because it works really well with his Shunibyo, seeing it in the original Japanese. Anyways, I, I, I'll leave that for you to see why. This next one is one that some people may know, some people may not know. It's called, oh, I just call it Instant Death. It's got a much longer name than that. It's my Instant Death ability is so overpowered. No one in this the world, uh, next world, it, this world, I don't know, stands a chance. I just call it Instant Death. This one is parody and I would say even more so than Eminence and Shadow. Kind of weird, we got the two big parody ones in a row right here but this one's parody e even its name is parody its main character is parody its side characters are parodies it, it's it's all a parody whereas in imminence in a shadow it feels like something is a it, it feels sort of like there's like a, a, a parody is strolling through a normal isekai world. And I'm not just saying Sid, I'm kind of saying him and his organization, sort of. But Instant Death is a full on parody. Now, 
how do I rate it? The anime itself I can't recommend. How are you? This is the only one I've done this for. What's this? These are both instant death. Why do I have to? It's because this one's the light novel and I know I'm writing animes here. But I have to write the light novel as well because honestly, the, the, the anime I don't think it left out some major themes from the light novel. And on top of that, I don't think it catches the tone of the light novel. It does not catch the purity. To me, instant death is like the equivalent of... Mm, now, it falls into the same category as The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in how it does its humor. And this, I've seen people point this out and others say they're incorrect. And honestly... It is the same humor. It might not... The thing some people don't realize is it's... Not as good as the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That would be absurd. But it can still be in the same... Category. It's like an anime isekai version. And... It, it, it's, it's a really... Pan... Jumped through a world of overpoweredness where they, you could even pick a lot of side characters in the story of Instant Death to be main characters for these other anime. Like the main character of an anime and it's like, oh, that works because there's so many silly, tropey side characters and that's uh, it's. it's it's fun, and he is overpowered. I also did initially consider, should instant death not be on the list, but be to the side of the list somehow, or maybe it should be the list. If you uh, know the show, no, know the light novels, then you might know what I mean. Anyways, next up is a favorite of Manny's. I think this is one of the most popular ones in here. It's a uh, Konosuba. Konosuba is actually the only. <laughs> I actually went and rewatched some of the show of oh, this specific tier list because I didn't remember everything about it. <laughs> Honestly, it's been a while since I first watched it. And I'm also going to point out, I've only seen the first season of it. I think it has like two more seasons and a spin-off. Maybe I'll get to watching those sometime. I mean, this kind of already tells you where I'm leaning towards putting it. And in fact, it's right where it needs to be. It's in the watch if you have time. I would watch this one if you have time. It's fine. I I don't find it as anything incredible or anything. I I think it's hilarious. It, it is a comedy one, comedy fantasy. It, it's really fun. In fact, here's something funny. I found, especially in my rewatch I was doing of the first season, I found that it reminded me more and less of an anime, less of a Japanese anime and more of like an american sitcom in particular it reminded me of one i've watched quite a bit in fact i've rewatched the sitcom and that one is called cheers it's a bit old at this point but uh, it really reminded me of the sitcom cheers and I don't have a lot of explanation of why. Maybe it's the <clears throat> crippling character flaws that all of the main characters have in both. That could be it. That could... No, I think that's it. May and maybe something to do with the way they do the humor. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's, it, it's like a fantasy isekai 
sitcom, to be completely honest. That's basically what it is. And maybe sometime I'll watch more seasons. I did like it. I just... Eh. What if you have time? I, I particularly like Megumi. I mean, I love fire and explosion. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, honestly, I don't have much more to say about it, despite how popular it is. The next one we have is In the Land of Leedale. Wait, this is another video game one. Why is Sold Out Online and the Lag Horizon not on this? I don't know. Maybe we'll do a video game anime tier list sometime. But In the Land of Leedale is one where a... Um, kind of sad stout to the anime in that the main character is like bad ridden for her entire life and she ends up dying hospitalized and reincarnates into her favorite game and it's really just I, I would describe it as a comfort anime it's she's really powerful in this role of an MMO that she reincarnated into because she was already one of the most powerful heroes and she has to come to grips with some weirdnesses of converting from an MMO to like a sort of real version of the MMO but this is all stuff you get from other isekais as well so it's not I, I i don't find anything in it terribly done better than like a ton of other shows or anything i i just find it as a comfy one that's less dramatic than some yeah, but it is fun. It is fun. I'm just leaving it in watch if you have time. If you haven't seen it and you, you've seen all these other ones, I'll maybe get to it sometime. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, next we have ooh, this one is the name, and this one must also be a parody, I think. Uh, I, the, the show itself doesn't really have parody element, but I think the name is. Uh, the, the show is called, didn't I say, to make my abilities average in the next life. Uh, the explanation behind that title uh, was something like, oh, average between an ant and this insanely powerful, what was it, a dragon? actually in, ends up being much more powerful than a human which is amusing um the show itself i found for most of the show it was really good but honestly towards the end of the show it kind of started i don't know falling off it's kind it didn't stick to quite it's it's quality and not not just an animation but in storytelling and pacing and such that it had earlier and if it did i might be able to put it in rackman but uh, as it is with the way the show ended it's like between can't recommend it and watch if you have time like i almost can't recommend but because like the first at least half of the show was actually pretty decently done to well done i i would say watch if you have time but uh towards the end it does kind of fall off okay this one's this next one is actually kind of tough to talk about because of of the way it's discussed online it's mashoku tansei so I am torn between two categories for this one. Either saying, I just can't recommend it, or saying, I'll tell you right now, the other category, favorite. What? Why wouldn't I be a... Well, there are topics, I know, 
it just casts and <laughs> that was a slip of the tongue but that worked <laughs> they were topics that just casts no uh they were the epics that i would just cast in it the uh, well that can happen it that you know not everyone is fine with watching in an anime so i'm going to leave it in a favorite i think however that sad it's not for everyone some of uh, the some people it's just not for if you start watching it and you dislike uh, dislike the way things are in it then maybe realize it's not for you even though it's like my favorite and the favorite of actually a number of other people it, well it's not actually my favorite I, it's in my favorite category but it's not necessarily for everyone i really like it it is now here's where it comes up i've read the light novels i've read all but the last two i think <laughs> and that that that's why i like it because of how many light novels there is there's i don't remember 30 20 30 there's quite a few quite a few and it doesn't it doesn't go like some light novels uh like a uh, certain magical index for instance we uh, that story they've done what over 40 light novels and half a year has passed while in the light novels of mashoku tansei real time and developments pass real progress and, and development happens characters grow and uh, and uh, people age that's my favorite thing actually about this one uh, is that time really passes and we also we're not just told that our time passed we we see the characters develop and change as it does but it is not for everyone next up oh we have another one that actually in some ways is similar uh no game no life i'm just going to move this up here no game no life we're probably never getting a second season of no game no life but it is my favorite i believe yeah it's my favorite of all of these it's one of my all-time favorite animes, not just a man, Isekais. No Game No Life is an anime where the two genius characters of Blink, that's the name as a duo, the two of them get reincarnated into a world of games and largely bold games and I don't always bring it up on this channel, but I love board games, guys. I love board games and card games and uh, dice games and such. I, I, I have quite a few board games in the room with me while I'm discussing this. Quite a few. I love them. And just for that, it, it just... Well, it's also that no game in your life does it really well because does the games really well there are parts of it honestly that i could do without some of the some of the fun service i would prefer them not to have in a no game no life but the games are really splendidly done i love them Okay, next, I'm surprised that this is actually our first uh, villainous 
anime yet in this tier list. It's uh, why Raylian ended up at the Duke's mansion. Uh, I'm a big fan of, I, I, I guess the subgenre is like villainous animes and light novels. Uh, I, I don't really know how to actually define the subgenre, but I think Raylian you know, follows into the category. I would say I would say it does, anyways. And it's it, it, this one is actually is this like a first? Uh, this one is just purely romance, which I don't think you know. This is the first just purely romance one so far. It also has some like a politics and clever between the uh, two main characters being clever but uh, Book Rome also has some of that, the cleverness uh, same with I, I guess you could say if, if I'm just saying cleverness there are other things but uh, I'm trying to say something and it's not quite coming out, anyway they kind of play political chess is what I'm trying to say there and I wish they did it a little more in it. I'd like it, the show a little more if they did. I, I think I can firmly put Rayliana into the recommend category. Now, uh, it's... I, I really like it. It's good if you like a good romance one. I did have some slight issues with it. That... Uh, it, it feels like, for the most part, the only strength of the main character was that she'd read the book that she was reincarnated into. And that felt like mostly all she had going for her, which honestly I felt was a little weak. I kind of wish they showed... I don't know, more strength and hope how to than just that. But I'm hoping we get another season sometime because how it ended, we, we, we could certainly use more than we got. Or maybe I'll read the source material sometime if we don't get another season though. Oh, but yeah, I recommend that one. Oh, we have another very popular one to discuss here. It's called uh, ReZero. ReZero. Uh, very popular anime. But as you might hear, uh, I, I'm, I'm not actually that into it. The funny thing is, it has a lot of things in ReZero that... I, I do like an anime. So. Oh, ReZero, Stouting Life in Another World. That's its full name. But here's the thing. It has time loops. It has uh, some interesting characters. And it's also, in some ways, rather dark. At times, at least. And I like that. However, I don't know. It just doesn't... It never felt like... The characters uh, grabbed me the way characters do in, in, uh, in a lot of my favorites and such. And yeah, I don't know. This one, I almost feel like I should put in a Rockman, but it just didn't grab me enough. And yeah, I think it, it has a second season, but I don't think... I think I've seen it a second season, I'm not certain. It, it, like, be because the characters never grabbed me that much, it, I, I also don't even remember if I've seen how much of it I've seen, and some of the details are vague in my, ma in my memory. Maybe I should have rewatched some of it like I did with Konosuba, but I, I don't know, it's just... It's fine. If you like... Time travel and psychological ones. I'd give it a watch. It, it's dark and such. 
From those things, I'd think I would like it more, though, honestly. Ah, uh, here's the one I've been waiting for. We have, I don't remember how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom. So this is one of the reasons I specifically stated I have to have watched 12 episodes at least because I have watched more than 12 episodes but I haven't completed the full season and I also don't intend to. Uh, this is my, I think this is my least favorite one out of all of the, uh, I know a lot of people like this one. How a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom. And in fact, I see it talked about in light novel things as well. People like it as a light novel, as an isekai, as an anime. People like it. I, I, there's a decent chance if I read the light novels, I'd like it. But maybe it was that the anime rushed things. I don't know. I have no intention right now to read the light novels because the anime made me dislike it. Why? Because the show just... It, it felt like the developments that happened in the show were unearned and happened just because they happened. They didn't feel like they were woke for and something is just I, I don't know uh, it, to me there, there's another anime it's not an isekai it seems like it's just a better uh, but I, I don't like getting into comparison too much but uh, I, I don't know I, I almost think had they taken the show slower I would have liked it a lot Mo, <laughs> if you know what I mean with, I'm going to keep this next statement rather vague, then we're going to end discussion on this, because I don't want to linger on it, honestly. But to me, Mashoku Tanase did what this one, what Realist Hero tried to do, but... Uh, uh, Mashoku Tansei soloed me where Realist Hero lost me. And uh, I, I don't know. It just didn't feel like there was a reason for things. Th things just happened. Moving on. Because, uh, it's fine if you like it. I, it, I just... I, I didn't. Next, reincarnated as a sword, which, from the title itself, that sounds really tropey and really almost the name sounds like what someone might come up with as a parody of what anime is as a whole reincarnated as a sword but in reality it, it's a fantastic an uh, anime it is so good uh, the the main character is need i say it reincarnated as a sword but there are two main characters and i love this uh, I love uh, fighting and duos. He's a sword. Someone has to wheel at him. I mean, I suppose uh, flying swords are cooler too. But uh, someone wheeled him. Uh, a, a young cat girl named Fran. And uh, light spoilers, he, he frees the cat girl from slavery. And... It's it's fantastic the relationship. But he he's a teacher and they they battle together because he's an intelligent sword and she's the wielder. I I love I love the teacher student relationship between the two of them, and I really really hope 
we get to know anime of this i i do plan to get to reading the light novel at some point because the anime barely covers any of what's released in light novel format i checked after finishing the the anime wow there's a bunch that isn't adapted at all and i i love these two this is perhaps perhaps anime only the only better one is no game no life right now in, in my list in i'm going to say including the ones we haven't gotten to talking about yet uh, reincarnated as a sword better than all of the that said should ascendance have a bookworm and mashoku tanase start to get to some of the stuff that comes up later in their story uh, maybe maybe they'll be even better Next, we have Sasaki and Peeps. Uh, I love this one. It's kind of wild. In some ways, Alice, although I'm wondering again how we're qualifying things as Isekai, because this one goes between like our world and this other world. We do not firmly stay in one or the other. It's a story about a guy who gets a pat beard who... I guess the pet beard was reincarnated to our world. Maybe that's it. <laughs> I don't know. It's a weird. But the beard can take the two of them between the two worlds. And it's really fun. The two of them sell things in, from one world to another. And they make money. And I feel like I'm spoiling stuff right now. I, I, I don't know. They have adventures in both worlds. With supernatural things like an hour world and fantasy things and the other and scenes get really twisted and tangled and it's just a lot of fun i will say it's really chaotic and i can firmly recommend it as long as you Realize that there's perhaps a lot to keep up with in trying to watch this one. They're just like a lot to follow. And uh, yeah, there's a lot to follow in Sasaki and Peeps. And I don't think there's anything else I can say without just rambling about the strangeness of a uh, chaos it's chaos it's a real chaos next we have slime a reincarnated as a slime it's a very popular one it is uh strangely out of this whole list it's the only one out of two no it's it's one out of the two animes that i haven't finished I have watched more than 12 episodes, which was the criteria I set, so I think it was like 16, 17, 18 episodes I watched. Uh, I liked it. I did like the show, and unlike the other one I haven't finished down here, Realist Hero, I never stopped liking a slime either. I still like slime. Reincarnated as a slime was great. However, I, I don't know. Something about it kind of just lost me. I didn't feel the need to watch anymore. It, it felt like... Maybe maybe some of you will get this. To me, it felt like the storytelling was really... Predictable. It, it's like things went... I'd say linearly, but th that doesn't quite cut it. Things went exponentially. Maybe that's the better word to you. But still, uh, an exponential growth, you can still uh, predict where things are going with that growth. And it's like just at a certain point in watching it, it honestly didn't feel like I'd get anything Mo out of watching Mo of it because 
I I wouldn't find out how Rimuru was going to beat this next character because I already knew. I, I don't know. It, 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 it was good. And I think I can recommend it. I... Uh, I, th this is so weird. I want to recommend this one, but I also have no intention of watching any more, of even finishing the first season. It's even more bizarre because the main character is voiced by my favorite, I, I guess, uh, favorite English female voice actress. Uh, Brittany Kowalski. She's, uh, she's my favorite English female voice actress I have a different favorite male one uh, and she voices Rimuru in the English dub I love that I, I but I'm an in incredibly tone because I also have no intention to finish this so maybe I should not recommend one that I also don't intend to finish so if you're listening to this I recommend this, but I not enough for me to finish it, so I think I have to put it in the can't recommend category. I have absolutely no regrets in how much of it I did see, so it would never go into the bottom category if I wish I could, could unwatch it. I still don't intend to watch any more as things are. I, I don't know. Maybe someday someone will, will convince me to watch the rest. But as things sit, eh, I just don't find it necessary. Next, we have one that I liked. Uh, this one is the Executioner and Her Way of Life. I don't know what category you want this in. This one's interesting. So sometimes I like shows in hindsight just because of um they introduced a aspect in them that it's like, oh that changes how I think about that trope in this way. That's an interesting take on that trope. And that's not the only thing going for this one. But I will say I liked their take on the Isekai trope as a whole. It, and I in fact I'll say I thoroughly recommend people watch at least the start of the show. At the very least the start of the show and you kind of get to see a different take on what, uh, what how things go in this other world when people are isekai. It, it's interesting. And I really enjoy how the abilities work of the people who come from our world to this other world. The way their abilities embody concepts and there's there's like a bit of a romance in this one is it though though i'll say uh yeah we need more seasons of it we need more seasons of this one i have i'm saying that though not knowing about the source material i have no idea where the source material is at this point uh so I don't actually even know if we have the material for no season. I have not investigated that myself. It's also funny because this is one of the few animes I've seen where one of the uh, where one of the main characters wields a dagger as her primary weapon, and that's just like as a side a uh, primary weapon. I can only think of another main character that does a dagger anyways uh, yeah so i can recommend that one though next we have the faraway paladin which i'll say i've watched the first season of i believe recently a second season came out of the faraway paladin and i'd like to get to that sometime 
I would like to get to the second season. I just, uh, it's, it's been on my list of animes to get to for quite a bit now. I don't know when I'll get to it, but I'd like to get to it sometime. And I, I think, yeah, I, I can put this firmly as an anime that I recommend. Something about this one. This is, okay, one of the two, yeah, one of the two animes that to me seem most like a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. This one even has a halfling bowed in it. Uh, the, the main character is reincarnated and he's raised by three undead. And I, I won't tell you quite to where things go, but he does end up, uh, this slight spoiler, he ends up leaving home and kind of getting his own adventuring party, uh, and he's sort of a paladin, a pledged to, I won't spoil, one of the gods or goddesses, I won't say what the god or goddess, and he, 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 he's known to be a paladin, which is unlike most people in this world. Most people are not paladins. It's... I, I don't re actually remember why. Maybe it's an old tradition. It's been a bit since I watched it. But it just feels like a D&D &D campaign. And just that um, puts it in my good favor. <laughs> Uh, I, I, li I, I do like Dungeons and Dragons. I don't bring it up often, but I do like it. Uh, so, so yeah. yeah well, I, I, I thoroughly recommend that. If you like Dungeons and Dragons specifically, I can highly recommend it. Uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It has elves and halflings and... I believe it has dwarves as well. In fact, I think... I think the next season that I haven't seen has them specifically. Uh, anyways, our last one is... What is it? My next life as villainous all routes lead to doom, I believe. This one has two seasons aside from seeing the first season. I need to get to the second one, though. Because this one is also fantastic. This one, I am torn between recommend and favorite. We do not have a lot of comedy... Wait, we maybe... We have some comedy animes in this list. We have some, but I think out of all of the ones with comedy and comedy aspect, I think villainous all routes lead to doom. This is the one that goes the most hard and, um, uh, comedy. Uh, this... Ah, uh, the main character is, uh, reincarnated into a dating sim, and she is the villainous in it, and it's like, okay, that stuff's nothing... Um, nothing unusual. She, she, she's scared she might die since she's the villain. So get exiled. Still nothing unusual. What is unusual is that she is more dense than a black hole. She is. In multiple ways. In multiple ways. She <clears throat> doesn't understand that anyone would ever have feelings for her. Because she is, she still views herself as the, the villainous. I did mention I like villainous one animes, don't I? And it is <laughs> very much a reverse here, um, because our spoilers. But basically, every character that she spends any significant amount of time with in the falling of her because she's a uh, she's who she is she she's an idiot and she's not the slightest bit cruel and she, she's paranoid of trying not to be the villain but she never quite grasps that people could view her in a good light 
the Thai remember it. This is another one. It's been a little bit, you know. But, oh, it's hilarious. Because, ah, uh, nickname. So, her, her name's Katarina. Katarina Clay's nickname, of course, though, is, is Bakarina. She, she's... She's so dense. I, I, I don't know if uh, there's another main character as dense as her. She, 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 she's as dense as a black hole. She even pulls people into her orbit and to her harem. Yeah. Uh, it's it may be, maybe one of the most hilarious animes I've seen. One of the ones that has had me laugh the hardest. I, I would like to watch some more villainous animes sometime myself and isekai animes as well. Let me know what you thought of this list and how you would rank animes, isekai animes in specific. I'm thinking of maybe doing another one of these tier lists sometime and YouTube thinks you might like this video here until next time though please do try and have a blast for me bye